Yep, you know it's Wednesday if we're talking Blind Appeal College Football and opening our Blind Appeal College Football Hour with Idaho Vandal Head Football Coach Jason Eck. We'd like to welcome our video audience. This interview always on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to KTIK YouTube, we would strongly encourage you to do so. And uh, who rocks a visor better, Jason Eck right now or Mike Prater in his prime? Text us. Let us know your opinion on that one. Coach Eck. Congratulations last week on advancing in this tournament. You got U Albany coming in, and we're getting ready for another f- terrific atmosphere in the Kibbe Dome. Welcome. I am fired up. You know, Prater, I'm worried you lost a bet or something. I mean, Utah beat the Florida this year, so you didn't lose a bet on that game to have to wear a Florida sweatshirt at the game. What's going on with that? <laughs> um, no, I didn't lose a bet. This is uh, this is a, an ode to my crush who last night got in the College Football Hall of Fame, Tim Tebow. So, uh, with all due respect to Jason Eck, who's my favorite college football coach of all time, Tim Tebow is my favorite college football player of all time. A great leader, tremendous. Yes, leader. yeah. So I'm giving him a little ode. Hey, he he went into the Hall of Fame last night. So this is all about Timmy Tebow. We we yeah. all wish we had a Timmy Tebow on our roster, right? You always want a Timmy Tebow. You know, uh, <laughs> I, uh, the, Grinow- the Gronowski kid. I think he's going to end up winning that Walter Payton Award this year. You know, he's one of the three finalists. He's got a little Tim Tebow with him. Uh, as a great leader like that. So we're we're going to win that award. Uh, Coach, the atmosphere, um, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, ESPN Plus, you're hoping for a sellout. How close do you think we're going to get to this thing, uh, topping last week's crowd? Well, I I tell you what, it was a great crowd last week. We had about 9,800 or something last week, but it it was the diehards, man. It It was people making a lot of noise. It definitely had effect on Southern Illinois. They had a few false starts where they were jumping off sides. The crowd had a huge impact in the game. You know, one of our coaches told me today that, you know, now that the season's over, talked to a guy about uh, from Montana State, and they talked about what a difference in our game, how the crowd noise hurt them. So our, our crowd's been a huge factor. I think the tickets just went on sale to the general public today. It was season ticket holders up to this point. But I, I saw there was a long line down at the ticket window about out the door. So that's a good sign, and hopefully we have another great crowd in there. Uh, Albany, this team, you know, there's not a lot of great crowds in that CAA out east. Uh, you know, their, their, their biggest crowd that they've won in front of this year – you know, the yeah, three on the road is 5,600 people. So I know Damn. we can vary that number and have a raucous environment and give them a new experience to play in front of. I love it, Jason Eck, with us. Just how how are we feeling about the team right now, Coach? How's practice going? Are they healing up to the point where you're you're confident in some guys? I mean, just yeah. this team, no, Coach. I, you good. win this game, you go. You're going to the Final Four, dude. This no. is a big one. Hey, this is a legacy game. You know, we, we've had three teams in uh, the history of the University of Idaho. We've played football here, I think, over 100 years. Uh, three teams have ever won double-digit wins. And, uh, or should be two teams. Two teams. We could be the third. And only two teams have ever gone to the semifinals, the 88 and the 93 team. Those are the teams that had double-digit wins. So this is a huge opportunity for our program. And, you know, very proud. You know, last week it wasn't the prettiest game. But we found a way to win, and, and you know what? There's no style points in the playoffs, and there's no moral victories in the playoffs. It's all about uh, the advance or you, or you didn't, and uh, we found a way to did that, do that, and we, I thought we showed a lot of heart. That was the biggest deficit we'd, we'd come back from in the last two years, so uh, it was awesome to see, and, uh, you know, great opportunity in front of us. Now, this Albany team is good, and that uh, I think we're catching their players' attention. It's a little tricky at our level just because you don't see a lot of the games. You know, the CAA has a bad TV contract, so you can never see any of their games. Okay. They're good. This this defense is outstanding. Their two defensive ends have combined for 26 sacks. I think one's got 14, one's got 12, and they can really rush the passer. Their their middle linebackers, the conference player of the year, uh, and their quarterback's a good player. He was the running runner up to Giovanni McCoy last year for the Jerry Rice Award, freshman of the year. So it's it's a good outfit coming in here. Uh, we got a lot of respect for this great Dane team. Uh, Coach, you know how are you going to beat them? I mean, uh, well, are you going to have to score more points than you did last week in the twenty? You're thinking. I mean, with this defense, maybe that's not no, going to be. Uh, this could be another game, Johnny. That's uh, you know, fourteen, thirteen, seventeen, fourteen. You know, we, we got to be great on special teams again. I thought that was our X factor last week. Yeah, uh, you know, returning a punt for a touchdown, blocking a field goal, then hitting the game winner. Uh, I think that's the, the the biggest edge I see on film we have over this team is on special teams. So we got to dominate in that area. And then, uh, you know, I, I like the matchup of our D line against their, their O line. We got to finish some plays, you know, last week, uh, that quarterback from Southern Illinois Baker, he's a great competitor. You know, he was able to extend a lot of plays and uh, shake off some sacks. I think we had three sacks, but we probably got to have seven or eight. Uh, but we got to get this guy down. And uh, you know, the one thing this uh, Poffenberger kid, their quarterback is, he's, he's, 
he's a little younger. You know, last last week that was a six year quarterback who was very experienced and he always made good decisions with the ball. At times this year, you know, this guy has uh, thrown the ball up a little bit when you got pressure on him. So hopefully we can create some turnovers. Our defense forcing two turnovers last week was a big part of the victory as well. And then, you know, offense, we got, we got to play better. You know, we got to move the ball more consistently. I think we did a good job in the second half getting the ball to Hayden more, which kind of got us going. You know, he had five yep. catches in the second half and only had one in the first half. We got, we got to get him starting faster and get them going early in there. I like how the old line responded, though. I thought they played their best football down the stretch. Uh, the last drive when we, we drove down and then in overtime. Uh, so uh, we, we can play better. And, I, again, I think that's an exciting thing coming into a game where you advance and now we, we, we know we can still play better and come back this week at home again, he's, which is huge. He's Jason Eck in the Otto Vandals play a, and FCS playoff game Saturday in the Kibbe Dome against Albany of New York. Big-time game, big-time legacy game, as Coach likes to talk about it. Coach, when you get to the legacy part of your football season, certain body parts just get a little tighter, and the roster just gets a little bit more nervous, and coaches just get a little bit more uptight. So how are you coaching the moment, the bigness of this moment this week? Well, I, I think it's going to help us settle in. You know, that, that was still something new last week. It was the first home game in the Kibbe Dome in the playoffs in 30 years. And, and I saw some moments, you know, we had a few times where guys got misaligned on offense that uh, I kind of attribute that to some, you know, some anxiety, some nerves in the big game. So I'm hoping that can improve this, uh, this second week. And, and the nice thing was we're playing at the exact same time. So it's like the exact same schedule, the exact same preparation for a seven o'clock Pacific game, eight o'clock mountain. But, uh, you know, we, gotta, we just got to stay in the moment and execute. And, and I think we got to do a, a better job. And I think we're, we're going to improve that this week as our coaches. Uh, you know, at this time of year where you got to play so fast because you're playing against really good players, uh, it, it, we need to be simple. You know, we can't have things that are too complex where it's confusing because the more complex a play call is, either offense or defense, the more opportunities you have to screw it up. So we got to make sure we're letting the guys play fast. Uh, you know, probably not as many checks, not as many check with me's on offense, and, and let's let the kids turn it loose and uh, uh, go win the football game. Put them in good positions and have simple things that they can go execute at a high level. Coach, you opened up this segment by talking about the history, by talking about that late season in the 1980s, like talking about 1993, getting to the division semifinals with double-digit victories. How, how much do you believe in the past? How much do you educate these players? Because these players don't care about the past, and I get it. No, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but some coaches want them to know that kind of stuff. I, I do want them to know because I, I, I want to know the the, the magnitude. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want them to put pressure on them, but just what we can accomplish, you know, what, what what's in front of us. And uh, – you know, I, I, I kind of feel as a coach, you know, if we can get this one, we're playing with house money. You know, we'll be with the farthest we've ever gone, and now we can go loose into the finals. But I, I want this one. You know, having this one at home and uh, having a team that's got to travel. I think the flight from Albany, New York, to Pullman uh, Airport is about five hours. So right. I think that's a heck of an advantage to have in the playoffs and having our crowd. Uh, they have they played in the Dome as recently as 21. I was hoping maybe they'd never played in the Dome. But they, they played in the Carrier Dome once, and they played in the Fargo <laughs> Dome back in 21. But I, I still think that can be a different atmosphere for them. So th this is, a, uh, I think, an incredible opportunity in our second year to get to 10 wins. And uh, when you have an incredible opportunities in your life, you got to take advantage of them, Prater. You know that. Coach, any, uh, any, any, any old Vandal celebs coming to speak to the team this week or have recently and maybe help put this moment into perspective? You know what? Uh, we have it. John Freeze, who's you know Vandal legend, you know, number retired, great NFL player. He was at practice the other day, and I uh, I asked him if he wanted to say a few words, but he's a little of a quieter guy, so he he passed on the opportunity, which which I'm fine with. You know, again, I uh, we did that a lot for the homecoming game, and we didn't play great against uh, uh, Montana coming out. So uh, you know, I, I think a lot of pe people were there watching. I know John Yarno was back and got to visit with him after the game and spent some time with him, and I know he. Uh, you know, was very happy. I got to see Don Munson, the legendary basketball coach who was here in the 80s and took the Vandals to the Sweet 16. He was at the game. I talked to him afterwards. And, you know, it's been neat. You know, uh, you know I think Coach Gilbertson, uh, you know, Coach Erickson, Coach Tormey, and uh, John L. Smith have all reached out to me during this playoff run because those were the guys who were, you know, the last guys nice. to take the Vandals to the playoffs and win. So that's, uh, you know, I think we have great history surrounding you, but, you know, Prater's kind of right. I don't think that matters much to the kids, but, uh, I think this could be a good legacy for our seniors to leave. And uh, when they bring their kids back here in 20 years to, to talk about being one of the best teams in the school history at the University of Idaho. I know it doesn't matter to most of our audience who probably have never heard the name, but come on, man. You had Don Shelton in town the other day. He's one of my heroes, coach. 
I, I got to visit with him after the game. He's a, uh, yeah, he, he's a legend in his own right and uh, does a great job. Teaches some classes kind of as an adjunct professor now. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome to see so many people back. Was very pleased with that crowd uh, for the first round. And I think Vandal Nation is going to surprise us again. And I heard they got a bus coming down from Coeur d'Alene. Uh, hopefully the weather agrees with us. We got a little, quite a bit of snow last weekend right around there. So I, I think it might've hurt some people from uh, Boise not wanting to drive through McCall with the snow, but uh, yeah, again, it's still, it's nice and toasty once you get here in that Kibbe dome. By the way, Don Shelton is a vandal and a 40 year journalist, maybe 45 these days. He's retired and living the good life and was the longtime Seattle Times sports editor. Did a lot of journalism work in the Pacific Northwest. Love Don Shelton. Just thought I'd throw that name out Did there. Did he go to Idaho? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Coach, this has nothing to do with the game, but it's obviously a hot topic, not only in college football, but here in Boise, Idaho. Name, image, and likeness. Have you had to deal with that yet? Is any of your players getting anything beyond a cheeseburger? We have a few guys who have some deals and, uh, you know, again, I think our deals at the FCS level are going to be more narrow, but, uh, you know, one, one guy's got something with a financial company. Uh, another guy's got it with a law firm. Another guy has it with an insurance nice. agency in town. So uh, I, I want to be aggressive with that. Again, we're, we're never yes. going to be able to, to match, uh, you know, what, what a Texas or something could do. But, you know, I know this in my career, I, I've turned down jobs that had more money when, especially when the people I was working with gave me a little bit of a raise because I felt they were trying to do that. So, uh, you know, that's something after the season, as we sit down with guys, I want to try to be aggressive for, and, you know, I, I think even putting, uh, you know, $500 in a month in our, in these young men's pocket uh, when they're up here in uh, Moscow can help with, you know, taking their girlfriend out to dinner or flying their parents out for a game. Maybe they, their parents couldn't come to otherwise. So I do want to be aggressive, especially with the top of our roster, the guys who, because we got a number of guys who are who are power five players, and uh, if they went, wanted, you know, Hayden Hatton, if he would have went in the portal last year, he would have he would have gone to the power five, and uh, he's one of our guys who has a few deals right now. So uh, especially th those type of guys, I want to try to take care of them as best we can. Uh, but again, I, I don't think we're going to be talking about hundreds of thousands. I think we'll be talking about, you know, like I said, if we can get them five hundred bucks a month or something, I'd be I'd be pretty happy as a starting point. Coach, your your staff hasn't been rated either, which kind of surprised me on a couple of levels. Is that because you're still playing? Is th are things different? Yeah. Pe people are going to come after our staff this year, you know. And I, you know, I think I think guys have already had some interest. And I the, the the thing I have, you know, the character of our staff is so great. We we wouldn't have anybody in our staff leave during the season. And uh, you know, and I think most coaches are respectful of that. And I and I think most coaches, if you tell a head coach who's interested in hiring that you that they're going to respect that because they'd want you to do the same thing for them. Uh, you know, if you went to work for them at a power five program and then, then they have a chance to go to the NFL or something. So uh, you, again, we're going to have some guys come after our coaches. And again, that's a compliment to our staff. And, you know, again, I, I hope that uh, when our coaches are leaving, they're leaving uh, to a power five team or to a, uh, you know, NFL team like last year when we lost Tyler Yelk. Uh, Cause I, I want to help those guys reach their dreams or, or head coaching opportunities. If our guys, want to go that route of trying to be a you know FCS head coach like like I did from South Dakota State so uh, we we got a tremendous staff and uh, again that's coming and that's my job to have the uh, reinforcements in the holster you know make sure you're on ESPN plus 8 p.m. Saturday night mountain time Idaho U Albany in the FCS quarterfinals trying to win another home game and advance in this tournament uh, coach I'm sure you saw Spencer Danielson he got the gig uh, we didn't think Boise State was going to keep it in the family but they did again I don't know if you heard Bronco Mendenhall to New Mexico, Jeff Choate to Nevada, a couple of Mountain West hires, and Craig Bull calls it quits today. His D.C. going to take over. Your thoughts on some of the FBS moving and shaking. And have you ever had a chance to meet Spencer Danielson, Jason Eck? I'm not sure if I have. I've got a chance to meet quite a few of the Boise coaches around on the road, but I'm not sure if I ever met Spencer. But he did a tremendous job. You know, happy for them. I, I thought last Saturday, what, what a great state, what a great day for football in the state of Idaho with us winning the first playoff game in 30 years, then winning the conference championship, and then College of Idaho was doing great in those NAIA playoffs. So that was, uh, you know, a great day for college football in the state. Uh, I know Boise's off to the Boise to the bowl game now, so hopefully College of Idaho and us can keep that rolling uh, this weekend. Uh, but, you know, again, I, you know, a little different. I know a lot of our old Vandals see them as a, a bitter rival. You know, again, our players, with them being so young, you know, the yeah. last time Idaho played Boise, they were probably four, five, six years old. So our players really don't see it that way. So, um, you know, uh, you know, wish them well. He did a great job down the stretch and uh, happy for him and his family to get that opportunity. And we'll go from there. Jason Eck, let's get after it. Uh, I'll see you this weekend up there, Coach. Good luck, and uh, can't wait to bring you on hopefully next week getting ready for uh, what could be even a bigger 
matchup. Jason Eck joining us. Go get him, Coach. Thank you, as always. He's up. Thanks, fellas. Jason Eck, Idaho Vandals. That's this Saturday going to be a fun one, Prater. In honor of the bowl season, in all, and I mean everything, all that comes with it, I thought we'd get a special Blind Appeal College Football Hour edition of Fair or Foul. I got some good ones. Prater, JP, let's have some fun on Prater and the ball game. This is Idaho Sports Talk, KTIK, The Ticket. From the Beacon Plumbing Traffic Studios, this is Ticket Traffic.